Elaine, Elaine, you got to get in here quick. Because what is it? <laughs> it's it's a Wonka Watch mini episode. Oh, why am I so tiny? Oh, my mic is so big. It's a mini <laughs> oh. ah. <laughs> The dog just barked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Felicia, what are we doing today? This week, um, me and Elaine have had some scheduling difficulties, so to make sure we have an episode this week, we decided to make a little bit of a mini episode. It's not a full episode, it's a mini episode. A morsel, and we're working really hard to make it small. It's going to be a shorter episode, yes. right? Yes. I've cut out Wonka Watch. I made our intro as short as possible I, we, by just not responding to what you're doing. I got eight hours of sleep to make sure that I didn't pull any like stupid shit. So we're ready. We're ready to go, yes. Felicia. Lay we're it ready on to us. Go. Today we're gonna be talking a little bit about what um what Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was before it was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Kind of the early iterations of the novel. Um You had to I, be there. <laughs> you you had to be there for it. It was like the, there was just such an energy. Uh, it was electric. Like the vibes were just killing it. Um, basically I was, had nothing to do at work and I read the book, The Missing Golden Ticket, which was published, I think in like 2014, with just a bunch of random fun rolled Wonka facts. And I learned a lot from it, but I haven't really found a good spot to put them in an episode. So I said, Hey, right here, we can cover some of the stuff about the novel. Um, so one of the things I learned about in the book was kind of the early drafts of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And we get some quotes from Roald Dahl himself. So I'm just going to read a little bit of this to you, Elaine, and I want to hear your thoughts and um, your criticisms. Wonderful. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory took me a terrible long time to write. The first time I did it, I got everything wrong. I wrote a story about a little boy who was going round a chocolate factory and he accidentally fell into a big tub of melted chocolate and got sucked into the machine that made little chocolate figures and he couldn't get out. It was a splendid big chocolate figure, a chocolate boy the same size as him. What is this accent? It's going it's going Bert <laughs> from Mary Poppins. It's becoming Bert really from Mary did. Poppins it so really fast. Did. I watched that movie a lot as a kid. Maybe that probably explains a lot about me. Oh, it does. Um, and it was Easter time. <laughs> <laughs> the most dramatic time of the season. Jesus <laughs> rises and again. The figure was put in a shop window, and in the end, a lady came in and bought it as an Easter present for her little girl and carried it home. On Easter Day, the little girl opened the box with her present in it and took it out, and then she decided to eat some of it. She'd start with the head, she thought. So she broke off the nose. And when she saw a real human nose sticking out underneath and two big, bright human eyes staring at her through the eye holes in the chocolate, she got a nasty shock. And so it went on. That's where the novel started. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did... Was he alive and then she started seeing this? Or was this like Law and Order, like, boom, I'm eating a human in chocolate? Two big, bright human eyes staring at her implies that he was probably alive, which I almost that's horrifying in its own right because he he was stuck in a shop window for multiple days. Why would he go the horror? Okay, not gonna lie, the dark Wonka aspect there. I kind of enjoy it. It also reveals more about uh, the Wonka that Roald Dahl had created, uh, you know. Or maybe it's a mishap. I don't know. And like, also, like, what would his poor family be doing without like, Char- Charlie is baked into Charlie. That's horrifying. I, yeah. I, I keep imagining. It's-, um, it's like if you went to eat your Easter bunny, your chocolate Easter bunny, and you're like, let me eat the ears. And then suddenly it's like you hear this like little scream. Um, <laughs> yeah, I actually refused to eat chocolate Easter bunnies as a kid because um I don't know. I didn't like that I was eating an animal. It made me uncomfortable. Um, and I wouldn't eat them. Like, I would legitimately refuse to eat them. Interesting. I ate everything as a child. Yeah. No bars. 
Nothing stopped me. <laughs> uh, Roald Dahl continues to say, but the story wasn't good enough. I rewrote and rewrote it, and little tentacles kept shooting out from my head, searching for new ideas, and at last one of them what? came back with Mr. Willy Wonka and his marvelous chocolate factory. And then came Charlie and his parents and grandparents and the golden tickets and the nasty children, Violet Beauregard and Baruch Salt and the rest of them. It's just like so. It was even before Wonka. Like he was yeah, just like, let's have a kid Wonka. just fall into the like. <laughs> yeah. Let's bake a kid. What the hell? Um, <laughs> yeah. Fuck also, it. Throw I, the kid I, in the chocolate vat. I don't give a I shit. Don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't like the idea. Also of him. Like, look, we're all creative spirits here, and we just have to follow our light and do what our you know process is. But f- why the fuck would you think if your brain is an octopus with tentacles? <laughs> Yeah, yeah it is. No, like, I, no, what it's, that? it's the worst way to think about it. It's That's like awful. the worst way to think about it. And also, like, um, he really had no plot for this thing whatsoever. I mean, no, 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 no. we all know no editing plot. is great, like, not to rag on writers. As oh, a fellow this, writer, I'm this going This book got back. edited. I need to tell you, this book got edited. There mm, were mm. so many children in the original version. Um, so he wanted to basically, he was having fun writing about a bunch of different children and things like that. And he was having so much fun writing all these evil little kids that he just kept writing them and he like didn't stop. So I've seen there's different numbers being thrown out there for how many children there were originally, but there were anywhere from 10 to 20 evil children originally in the story. And this book um, nicely provided me with a list of what is called the missing children. <laughs> Law and order begins. Doom, doom. Um, so Augustus Gloop, before he was Augustus Gloop, he was actually named Augustus Pottle, um, which Augustus is a Pottle. worse name. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then in addition to Augustus Pottle, Miranda Grope also fell into the Chocolate River. Because that's the thing. There were more kids, but there weren't more deaths. It was Do we- just like a... <laughs> It was like Do this, we know, they would like, just like kind of dive in after each other. What was Miranda Gropes uh, sin? We don't know. <laughs> um, so there was Wilbur Rice and Tommy Troutbeck who climbed in wagons running from the vanilla fudge room and ended up in the pounding and cutting room, which is what? horrifying. No. <laughs> so, I don't know how you could write that and have it not be like horrific. Um but how do hey, people let you know. how do people let Roald Dahl probably into libraries to read to children after like how do you like these are it crime is concerning. stories <laughs> I understand there's I I will need to find a source for this but I will find it there is one time he sent one of the deleted character deleted chapters from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory into a children's literary magazine and a literary magazine responded by publishing and a letter by a fellow author claiming that he is morally corrupt as a writer. <laughs> Just a little bit. I'm going to have to agree there. I kind um, of agree. Um, so then there was Violet Strabismus, who turns purple after chewing the three-course meal gum. So just different last name. Mm-hmm. Um, Clarence Crump, Birdie Upside, and Terrence Roper, who each cram a whole mouthful of warming candies and end up overheating. Something I never knew the Mumford and Sons names. (laughs) 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 Um, So sorry, wait, what happened? They ate overheated candy and died. Yeah, they eat warming candies, which is something that we will be discussing a little bit more next week because that's a deleted chapter from the. Did it get dark in here? Because I sent some foreshadowing. Ooh, oh. um, Elvira Entwistle, uh, who falls foul of the squirrels in the chocolate nut room. Wait, what? Who? F- wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I love what kind of who falls foul of the squirrels in the nut room. That's what I was trying to say. And then Charlie Bucket, who gets stuck inside a chocolate statue and witnesses a burglary and receives a very unusual reward so um, like <laughs> what do you mean an unusual reward <laughs> what like you what mean? did he win the factory so and was who he did the stealing still, did he still say all right i have these seven kids but i'm still gonna keep the bit where he's a big easter bunny <laughs> and <laughs> i because i think that is crucial crucial to the story um and it almost Did, sounds was like, he like home alone it in the chocolate factory? <laughs> you know, what, like the factory shuts down, he's he stuck witness? in a chocolate statue, he watches this thing, he finally eats his way out. 
I imagine yeah. some kind of Shawshank Redemption imagery as he gets out of that chocolate mm-hmm. um, statue, and then it's How like big raining do you chocolate. Think the chocolate statue is. I'm just picturing well, him is digging it a, a tunnel. Willy How Wonka, thick, you know, <laughs> like if it's of Willy Wonka, maybe oh, he's yeah. in um, the cane. I think that'd be fitting. Okay, um, sure. Yeah, and then he falls down, breaks a leg, and has to um, limp to freedom, only to get stuck, um, probably in some other horrifying death is my yes. addition <laughs> so um he kind of realized with help from his editor hey maybe like 15 kids is too much yeah mm-hmm. um so mm-hmm. he narrowed it down to seven and i didn't pull out all the seven just because some of them weren't that interesting but i did pull out some highlights um such as marvin prune a conceited boy and then the book puts in parentheses we never find out what happens to him so the book is like i don't fucking know man i don't don't ask me about don't ask me about Marvin Prune. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I truly do not know what to tell you about Marvin Prune. Marvin like, there is Prune. nothing to tell you. He's just a name and he's conceited, you know? He's a little boy who only wears suits. I, I agree. He definitely only wears suits. I think there's probably going to be something to do with a raisining. Maybe he maybe he is conceited and so focused on his, his, his looks and his beauty that he wants to uh, grow old older so he'll be more beautiful and Wonka's like here's a candy that'll make you look old so then he takes it and then he gets so many wrinkles he looks like a raisin Ooh, and then what if he like does a narcissus in the chocolate river Ooh, yeah Ooh, yeah stuck there forever Mm, crystallized mm. by the sugar crystals or whatever mike tv's name was not originally mike tv and i we're gonna play a little game real quick um (laughs) i'm going to give you um, we're going to play Mad Libs to see how close you can get to this name. So first, I want to you to give me a fish. Bass. Um, and now give me a sexually transmitted disease. Herpes. <laughs> well, babe, herpes trout um, has come here to party. <gasps> no! <laughs> no! What? No! He was originally named Herpes Trout. And Herpes Bass is also fun, but Herpes <laughs> Trout is... Herpes I just cannot... Herpes what, Trout. What in your right mind? You're uh. sitting there, what shall I name this boy? Herpes just eating a filet of fish. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. Herpes Trout, eh? Sisyphus Snapper. Not Sisyphus. Syphilis Sif- Snapper. <laughs> syphilis snapper and herpes trout that sounds like something you'd learn in sixth grade that actually sounds kind of fun that um <laughs> no 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 no, no. I, like, uh, I mean I, if you remove them from the sexually transmitted disease they're connected to they're fun names so weird you can delete this part i'm about to say but i just need <laughs> it's always okay. a good sign um the way that we did sex ed when i was in like fifth grade is they showed a cartoon video of two cocker spaniels going at it Oh my god! And they're wagging their tails, and they were like, "This is sex." And we were like, uh, uh, "What?" <laughs> and like, I don't remember anything else, but that has stuck with me to this day. That's <laughs> absurd. Um, <laughs> but that wraps up most of the things I found, except for one more little thing. Uh, the Oompa Loompas weren't actually always called Oompa Loompas, believe it or not. Um, their original names were Whipple Scrumples. And oh. I kind of wish they were Whipple Scrumples. Yeah, that's a little but more that's fun. that's where Whipple Scrumptious Chocolatey Fudgy bullshit comes from, right? Oh. The bar? Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe um, Did probably that in that world. He, he if puts you the Whipple up. Scrumples. <laughs> you go in the Whipple, you go we in the put Fudgy you in the delight. blender and then I eat you while I stare at my chocolate statue of myself. Ah, uh, wait, I have a question. I yes. have a question. If you could be one candy, what candy would you be? Um, if you don't answer this right, you're getting deleted from the podcast. Um, I, um, you're probably um, a jolly rancher because you're sweet, but give me headaches. I'm kidding. Yes, can I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a knee slapper right there. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I'll take a Jolly Rancher. Now you're a Jolly Rancher, though. I think it fits with the voices, uh, you know. Yeah, hey, I did hey. love those blue raspberry ones as a little kid. Oh, love those yeah. things. Oh my gosh, make my teeth sticky, hurt, and my mouth blue. That sounded Absolutely interesting. Obsessed with them. Ugh. What candy? What candy would? Hey, what candy would I be? Hmm. 
let me let me see let me look into your crystal my ball papers, the papers of your soul let me just look oh, in this, my soul would be made book. out of paper oh. 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 what do i see in this polish english dictionary <laughs> i see what's this oh this is the um <laughs> oh no oh no you have you uh, this what book have says won? you're quite like a milky way oh cool. do i have logic no i don't it's the only one i can think of the milky way uh, milky way because you mean the world to me ah uh, shucks Shuckleberry pie. That's the nicest darn thing I think I ever been told from a Polish English dictionary, which I would like to follow up. Why do you have a Polish English dictionary? I, I was trying <laughs> to learn question. and I just didn't. But why, was there like a medium you wanted to consume that was in Polish or was it just like, yeah, fuck it. I need this to be for my grandma. I'm, I'm, I am, I'm, I'm like, you are gen okay. genetically Polish. <laughs> okay. So there is some, I just didn't know if that was like a random poll. And I was like, okay. I mean, cause one summer I tried to teach myself Russian. Tank is talk. <laughs> Fun fact. Restaurant is restaurant. Well, we know about your whole, um, whole Russian history thing. Yeah. We, <laughs> it's not surprising. <laughs> not at all. Um, so thank you everyone for listening to this super duper short little mini episode this little wonka morsel wonka watch morsel if you will mm, a little a morsel appetizer you're, you're licking the crumbs off the ground and <laughs> they threw the crumbs to us in the well and we're going <coughs> and, you're, yes. and we're like thank you because we actually um got a little busy with the solitaire game we've been playing for 400 years <laughs> and um it's getting a little it's getting a little tight on the energy down here <laughs> Uh, you know what? I, you know what? I did lose track of the day. It's been 400 years. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> no idea what is happening. Great. Well, thank you for listening. Thanks uh, everybody be, for listening. Uh, be sure to submit your listener stuff. I don't know. I talked about it last time and I'm too tired to re-explain it. If you're a listener and you want to send us stuff, do it. We're doing a listener episode. We'll shout you out if you want. WonkaRapture at gmail.com. We're counting down to the prequel. So yippee ki -yay. Follow us on socials, TikTok and Instagram at WonkaWatch and uh, 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 It's not that important. You forgot our you forgot our catchphrase. It's not. Well, I didn't know if you wanted to start with it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it was like stealing your thunder, like boom, boom, there it goes. Elaine stole my thunder. Um, uh, no, not at oh, all. This is why we're so, you jolly rancher. Oh my god, so nice. you little milk. Don't call me <laughs> little milk. I take I, that is not a shuckleberry pie. That, that, that's a fuck you pie. Can I, can I redo my thing and say cowtail? Because that's what my <gasps> actual take is. I fucking love cowtails. Doesn't that feel right? That feels right. Okay, except your cowtail. I'm a cowtail. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me, my Jolly Rancher, and my old pet cowtail. And you walk <laughs> oh around. God. Oh, no. <laughs> Why is that so good? <laughs> well, with that, what we got to say is it's really not that important. Not that important. Bye, y'all. I'm hitting the road, gonna find my chocolate bar Get in long my little cow. pickup truck. There's the campfire, there's the marshmallow, lots of ladies in bikinis for no reason. It's beer in the season. Goodbye. I can keep going, but I stopped, so. Bye. <laughs>